Another tool that I know about and practice with myself is brain photobiomodulation, transcranial photobiomodulation using light, right? And frequency to help stimulate the brain. Can you talk a little bit about that and your usage of photobiomodulation with clients? For sure. So I think, you know, photobiomodulation, a lot of people are familiar with those red light panels, you know, that people use for their skin, for collagen production, for muscle recovery. But what people oftentimes don't know is that they can actually use red and infrared light specifically to optimize uh, the mitochondrial function within the brain. So basically the infrared is being absorbed by the mitochondria, driving more blood flow and oxygen, reducing neural inflammation, promoting neurogenesis and synaptogenesis. So basically the growth and creation of new neurons, new connections amongst those cells. Um, and then you're getting all the frequency specific effects of the light. So depending on how many times per second you're pulsing the light, for instance, you know, if you're pulsing the light 10 times per second, well, alpha is a brainwave frequency ranging from eight to 12 cycles per second. So the brain can actually then entrain into that alpha brainwave frequency, which is associated with relaxation um, through entrainment of the light. Now you can also do, say, a more stimulatory uh, say like a 40 hertz gamma rhythm that's been shown to break up uh, the amyloid plaques and, and Alzheimer's disease and, and have a lot of benefits in terms of traumatic brain injuries. So there's the uh, benefits of red and infrared independent of the frequency. And then there's also the frequency specific effects. But I think it's, it's interesting. It's funny that, uh, the, uh, a guy that Dr. Martin Berman, he talks about is a, uh, founder of Veronic and the Quiet Mind Foundation. They've done a lot of research in looking into benefits of brain photobiomodulation. And after he always finishes his lectures, he jokes that, or he, he says that, you know, so is some middle-aged guy in the audience who, who, you know, the first question is like, does this help with hair loss? And, <laughs> and, and I've like, heard that a lot too, my man. It's right? like the vanity uh, things first, brain right, <laughs> right. But it's like, it just illustrates kind of the point, you know, I think that we were talking about earlier where people are so obsessed with, you know, their, their body and how they look, you know, and then in terms of their brain that can sometimes go on the back burner. Um, but I think there's some uh, amazing benefits of, of brain photobiomodulation and also a lot of different ways to do it in terms of, you know, there's more clinical grade helmets. Yep. Uh, so there's like what Marvin, uh, Dr. Marvin Berman utilizes with, with Neuronic. Um, what's really cool about those helmets, you have the new helmet where it's like a four quadrant helmet where you could actually choose different frequencies in different areas or try to speed up, you know, the frontal lobes or and quiet down the occipital lobes. You are able to do that with this four quadrant device. And then there's also more consumer devices like, uh, you know, intranasal probes. It looks pretty bizarre, but sometimes I'll, I'll utilize them like driving or on the plane, right? Yeah. Have these, these probes you light like, up the nostril, the V light and other ones, right? That, yeah. that just, yeah, get in yeah. there and tap into the brain that way. <laughs> exactly. I'll just yeah. get some, some odd looks and people be wondering oh, yeah. what that is, but. <laughs> But yeah, it's all good. It's a conversation starter, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Other biohackers can can see you and, and relate to that. So uh, yeah, so I think there's a lot of different applications, but in general, kind of comparing and contrasting versus neurofeedback, you know, neurofeedback kind of regulating, improving the electrical signaling of the brain, which also has, you know, it's nothing's just in isolation when it comes to the brain, like the neurotransmitters work in tandem with the brain waves. So by improving the brainwave activity are also impacting neurotransmitter levels in the brain indirectly. Uh, but with the light, it's more so improving the brain, you know, improving uh, neuronal health on a cellular level in terms of really driving that increased blood flow and oxygen so the brain has enough cellular energy to then make the changes with neurofeedback. So yeah. I think they stack together really nicely because neurofeedback is a very energy demanding process. You're mm -hmm. asking the brain to make these changes in its electrical signaling. And if it doesn't have enough raw energy, um, you know, it can struggle to do that. So I really like utilizing the brain photobiomodulation prior to doing neurofeedback anecdotally, um, amongst a lot of clinicians. It's worked really well. And now there's actually starting to be uh, papers coming out showing the, the efficacy of you know, the synergy of those two technologies. 
Yeah, no, there, there are beautiful synergies between that and many other types of therapies, right? And of course, personalization is a big part of that. But like you said, that there is more and more research on this. This isn't something new. You know, transcranial photobiomodulation has been around for decades and studied for a long time. And they're seeing these, these effects on things like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, stroke, you know, um, depression, anxiety. It's, it's really something powerful. This is no longer just, oh, it's just going to maybe help you think a little clearer. Like, no, no, this, this is doing a lot biochemically within the brain to improve it without side effects, without drug usage. You know, it's light frequency, which is really, really cool and often overlooked.